Hello, Chris Parker here, and this is the Topaz Photo AI Quick Start Guide for Beginners to get you up and running as quickly as possible. If you are ready, let's do it. Now, if you don't have Topaz Photo AI yet, you can download it for free to try it out on your own images, and you'll find the download link in the description below. Now, when it comes to using Topaz Photo AI, you can use it as a standalone app that launches without needing Photoshop or Lightroom, or you can open directly from Lightroom by right-clicking on one image or a selection of images, and then you're going to select Edit in Topaz Photo AI. And then from this window, you'll have some options to choose from, and when you click on Edit, Topaz Photo AI will launch and open your images. You can also launch from Photoshop by going up to Filter, Topaz Labs, and clicking on Topaz Photo AI. Now, if you're using Topaz Photo AI as a standalone app, you can drag and drop your images to the interface or browse to your folder of images and open them that way. So once you have everything open, you're gonna notice that the selected image is going to fill up the majority of the interface and then to the right is where all the magic happens. Now up here at the top is your navigator, which is going to show the entire image, but when you zoom in, you're going to notice an outline of a rectangle, which you can then click on and move around to, well, navigate around your image. And then under that is your autopilot, and this is the brains of Topaz Photo AI. So autopilot will analyze your image immediately after it's opened or when you select from one of the thumbnail previews if you have multiple images open, and it's going to automatically apply adjustments it thinks will improve your image. So the adjustments it suggests will be based on what's in your image and the quality of the file. For example, in this photo, Autopilot says that a subject was detected, and if you hover over the word subject, it will reveal the mask of that subject and then under that, it says that an edit to improve the image quality was applied, and in this case, it's noise reduction. All right, so for this portrait, it also detected a subject, and the AI detected that the subject is out of focus, and it enabled the sharpening module to correct blur in the image. More on that in a second. So think of autopilot as a starting point, and within the image quality section, you have four modules where you can change the suggestions that Autopilot gave you. Then when you click on one of these modules, it will reveal the different options and sliders to precisely control the intensity of that edit. So removing digital noise will eliminate two kinds, color and luminance. So Autopilot will then detect whether the amount of noise is strong or normal, and strong, of course, will be more aggressive in removing the noise. So for this image, I shot this at ISO 5000, and it did a really good job removing all of that digital noise. However, I tend to find the noise removal to be too aggressive for my taste, and I will usually stick with normal, and I will also lower the strength that Autopilot suggested. So you'll have to play around with these settings to see what works best for your images. Now, if you find that the noise removal is smoothing out the detail, even at these lower settings, you can try to bring back that detail with this slider here. So Sharpen has three options for making your images sharper. And the first is standard, and I'll usually use this on images that are a tad soft due to using a zoom lens versus a prime lens. For example, in this image, I again had to use a very high ISO, and I think for this one, it was around 3200. And because I used a zoom lens, it added to the overall softness of the image. So since Autopilot didn't pick up on that, I added some sharpening, which vastly improved the photo. All right, next is Lens Blur, which is awesome for fixing images that are out of focus due to missing the correct focus point. For example, in this image of my daughter, I failed to focus on her eye and it's blurry, as well as parts of her face. But with lens blur, I was able to fix this image and save it. How cool is that? I love it. Now, real quick, you may have noticed in this image, she has a huge piece of dry skin in the middle of her forehead. But 
in this image, it's gone. So how did I do that? Well, I have a video tutorial showing how to retouch images in Lightroom, and you'll find the link to that in the description below. Now, I also love this next sharpening feature, which will correct images that have motion blur. And here's another image of my daughter from around 15 years ago, I think, and my shutter speed wasn't fast enough, which created some motion blur on her face, her arms, and her clothing. But motion blur came to the rescue, and now it's a keeper. All right, next we have Recover Faces, which is going to dramatically improve your low resolution files with faces. But just keep in mind, it's not recommended for high quality files. So here's a photo that I created back in 1990 and Autopilot detected this as a low res file with a face and suggested these settings to recover the face and it did a pretty good job. Now, enhanced resolution works in conjunction with upscaling and when enabled, it will generate new pixels for high quality upscaling and you have three options to choose from and I usually try all three to see which one will give me better results. Now for this image of our son that I created around 20 years ago, which is a very teeny tiny file at 400 by 600 pixels, Topaz Photo AI enhanced the overall image and if we take a look at the upscale module, it shows the new resolution is four times larger. And if I want to increase 6x, we can do that with max. Now, you can also type in a specific resolution if you need that for a specific project. And when you hit your tab key, the other side will auto update to keep the image within the same aspect ratio. Now, you may have also noticed this crop button here and once clicked, the crop module will open so you can crop your image based on the aspect ratio that you need or you can grab a side or a corner to crop in tighter. You can also reposition the crop by clicking and dragging inside here and then you can move it around as needed and then once you apply the crop, your image will be updated. All right, so once you're happy with your editing adjustments, it's time to save your work by clicking on the save button. From here, you have some options under export settings. So you can add text before or after the file name. You can choose your folder location to save the files to, and you can choose your file format. Watch this Topaz Photo AI tutorial next that covers a lot more information that wasn't covered in this one.